I am a product director at SemiSample, just been there for three months. Uh, previously, I was at Hostmaker. Who's heard of Hostmaker before? It's an ad with a pigeon on it. You'll probably see those around. Let's just start out with how we're different from hamsters. We as in people, right? When you have food in front of a hamster, he immediately just puts it in his mouth, right? But when it comes to people, they play with their food. They actually, when there's a problem to be solved, they get very creative about it. And when you ask, let's say, if you, you can clearly see this can infer what sort of problem this is trying to solve, and in, as well as this. And if you ask, let's say, the guests I, for ideas or your colleagues or the supplier, you get loads of ideas um, coming your way. And this is what happens. The product discovery challenge, you get loads of features. Um, this is pretty much what my backlog looks like when I start out in a new company. Um, it's just a pile of ideas, a pile of solution. Um, but there is a way and to clean things up. You see how, what I did? So um, there is a way to clean up. Uh, so I'm going to go through this process with you and with this tool. So there is a Marie Kondo of product management. Who's familiar with Marie Kondo? Who's not familiar with her, actually? I'll just, OK. All right, OK. I'll explain a bit about that. So let's just start with saying that there is a Marie Kondo of uh, product management. Her name is Teresa Torres. And she is a product coach, um, helping product managers uh, struggle in just starting out or companies struggling with the idea of product management. If, let's just say, if your company stops listening to you, it's actually a good idea to hire someone like her because companies have a tendency to listen to contractors much more than their own employees. This is fact. Um, so what Marie Kondo does, uh, she's been, she, she released the book a couple of years ago, and now she's on Netflix on this uh, reality TV show, teaching Americans how to tidy up, clean up, declutter, because Americans at the heart of it are, have lots of stuff in their house. So she, when, when it came to books, so when it came to books, there, she had a massive backlash from people who love to read. It's like, don't tell me to get rid of my books. Don't, don't tell me what I should be reading or not. Because she was suggesting just keep 30 books in your house and that's all you need. That's fine. When it came to other items like clothes, people didn't bother her. But she said to the people who do read books and are passionate about books, like, this is exactly what you're passionate about. This is showing, this is part of the whole process of understanding uh, your focus, um, knowing what you want. So she's basically saying, focus on what you keep. Don't focus on getting rid of stuff. And if you focus on what you keep, you only tidy up once. I'm going to say that again. If you focus on what you keep, you only tidy up once. If you focus on, say, getting rid of stuff, you're going to do it every year. You heard of spring cleaning? You do that every year. But when you keep your focus on what to keep, um, you prevent things from entering your house. You prevent things that are not useful from entering your backlog, which is my point. So in a similar fashion, Teresa Torres uh, focuses on the problem, the opportunity of the customer. If you understand the problem and opportunities, you will understand the exact solutions rather than a variety of solutions. By the way, um, 90% of the content of my slide came from her. Um, I learned a lot about her. I built my product strategy around her methods. And you could see most of the content from producttalk.org. Uh, she's also on YouTube as well, if you Google her name up. Uh, so this is the agenda of the presentation. It's finding the goal of product user discovery. Uh, this is about finding your product, um, uncovering your first feature. And I'm going to show you the incremental step, the, the foundation. How do we focus on a problem? What is, how do you focus? What is focus? And how do you use the solution, which is her opportunity solution tree, within my workflow, within the context of your own company? And I'll apply it over an example. Netflix, this is something you and I can relate to if you watch, if you stream uh, shows. And then I'll go into a bit about me, and maybe I'll demo the product of the company I'm currently working in, if we have time. OK. So the goal of product discovery is to learn what to build next fast. And these days, we have lots of tools. Um, as in, within the past five years, we have lots of tools to help us learn 
uh, answers to these questions. Are we meeting customer needs? Can customers use our solution? Do customers want our solution? So the tools we have here is, for example, Agile. So you quickly um, push a product out to get a feedback. You have usability testing, prototyping, so you get to know whether you use, your customers use it quickly, uh, can use it. And you learn about this prior to actually develop, development. So you, you, you minimize the risk. Um, the other aspect is recently there's a book called Jobs to be Done, or a method called Jobs to be Done, is to help us um, understand what the customer problems are. So you have a loads of solutions, but what is the problems that, they're trying to, that we're trying to solve for the customer? And this is a very deep level question or high level question that we're trying to answer. And Teresa Torres is saying that product discovery is actually multiple tiers. It's not just finding the right solution. It's discovering solutions as well as discovering what the problems are. And when you could answer these questions, you eventually get to the ultimate question. Are we driving towards the desired outcome? And what I mean by outcome, that is the business outcome of your company, such as the, the mission or the, the OKRs. Who's heard of OKRs? Okay, so this is um, a metric that you have to attain to. A lot of people miss this bit. Um, the problem aspect. They come up with loads of solutions and they're trying to drive towards the outcome. So they just make a quick link straight to it. So in the next slide, I'm going to show you how to come up with the problem. So visually, this is what it looks like. If you have an outcome called, say, increase engagement, it's a business outcome, or increase revenue. Um, this, by the way, is really a business outcome because it's not a customer problem at all. And below it is solutions. And these solutions can come from your customer. Um, it could come from your boss. Here you go. Please, please deliver this. And you, you have to figure out which one should I deliver first. And all these might have valid reasons. So for those who can't see in the back, this is added dislike button. This is a social media example. Highlight past stories to share. Turn off story notifications. How, how do I know which one is has higher impact on the outcome. Um, one way to do it is you could do experiments. You could interview um, the customer. You could ask them to part, do a card sorting. But what happens if there's more than one solution? You might end up with loads of time that's been wasted. Or if you're trying to do experiments, you ended up with three experiments um, to deal with. Again, this is, this is just a small example with three solutions. What happens if you have a backlog of, like, say, 50 solutions? How, how do you test for that? Um, so the idea is you simply you start out by understanding how to group these solutions. Let's just uh, put them together and say, add a dislike button, turn off store notifications. That's more like it's engaging with the story. And here, highlight past stories to share. It's more like sharing the story. So we now put a, a level in between. So this is the problem, and, or this is the opportunity that we want to focus on. And what we, hap what we just did is we went from three things to test to two things to test. And another thing is, when you're talking about the problem itself, you're asking a deeper question to the customer. Let's just go into the overall. I know this is a busy slide. I actually left this here so you could see the small print later. Um, what I want you to focus on is this is pretty much the solution within the context of your company. So blue again is the outcome. This is your problem space. This is where you think of your strategy and then the solutions at the bottom. So let's start off from the top. Um, you get your outcome from your product leader. If this is very essential to finding what your product is, if your outcome is not clear, you're going to have a problem. You're going to have a mess of solutions. And you need to converse with your product leader often to get this clarified. Usually this is the, o the R and the OKR, the result, the metric that you're trying to achieve, the business metric. So this space, the opportunity space, you get this from customer interviews, through competitor analysis, through research of the marketplace, and you come up with, you figure out through that research the problems that your customers are facing. And then you come up with solutions with the entire team. This could, once you share the problems with your devs, your UX, with everybody, they will, they will give you solutions. 
and you could then link them to the actual problem and so that you won't have like isolated solutions that don't actually meet up to the actual outcome or it doesn't drive to a particular problem. And you see, notice here that the outcome and opportunity and solutions are going into one. If you, the priority is, let's say, the higher impact is to the left. And those on the right of a lower priority, you don't have to worry about. So this minimizes the number of solutions and this focuses on the solutions that you have presented. So finally, this, you see these lab beakers here on the side. These, this represents experiments. And we're talking about delivering fast. We're trying to evolve fast. We're trying to learn fast. So you run little experiments um, to figure out you know, what the predictable metric it could be. And then you could feed that back to the opportunity. Figure this would, the results of the solution will give you an idea of what is, that, what is the problem, or better, a clarity of the problem. And then you feed that back to the outcome, and then you feed that back to the product leader. All right. I'm going to go through an example. Just um, so I've chosen Netflix because all of us could uh, relate to streaming, or most of us can. And let's just say, for example, the outcome is to increase the number of viewing hours per viewer. So again, this is a business outcome. This is not a customer problem. Like I don't have a problem. Like my personal problem is not to increase the number of hours on Netflix. I just want to be entertained, right? But the consequence of that is increasing hours. So that's how I differentiate outcomes and problems. And the goal here is to find what the problem is or the opportunity is. I want to be entertained. So let's say, for example, you're at a user testing session. You're, you're sitting with the customer, and you just ask this simple question. Tell me about the last time you watched Netflix. And this very keen and you know, gung-ho fan of Netflix gives you all these problems. Um, I have left out the solutions for now because we're, we're focusing on the problems. And there's actually a lot of problems. Um, so how do you, if you ask them to card sort them, like, okay, which one of these is the one that you want most, assuming that's the one with the highest, biggest impact? You could actually sit there and be here for an hour because they might take a, a while to sort this out. Um, it's actually easier to ask them to group them so watch this. Um, so if you ask them to card sort, and if you ask them to compare, let's say, these two, the first one is, I can't find something to watch. And the second one is, I'm out of episodes of my favorite show. They actually sound related. It's actually, this is a reason why I can't find something to watch, because I'm running out. And you find out later on that I can't figure out how to search for a specific show is also another reason for that. So it's easy to group them. This sounds more like the parent like the parent problem, and this is the sub-problems, these are sub-problems. And then we go into something else, like I don't know when a new session, new season is available. I don't, I want to know what my friends are watching. So this is more like fear of missing out what's going on. I don't want to miss an episode. I, want, I don't want to miss out the conversation that my friends, my colleagues going to have tomorrow. Um, the next set is, I fell asleep at several episodes that kept playing. I want to skip the intro of the shows. I want to skip the show's intro. So these are more like experiences while I'm watching. So this is how you start grouping them. So what I just did is just highlight the groups. This is pretty much the equivalent of pulling a pre-made pie out of the oven. So it's all laid out here. What, uh, what I've left out was I want to watch my shows on my, f on my flight. I want to watch my... I want to watch shows on my train commute. So this is more like where I want to watch um, Netflix. So these are the groupings that you could have. All right, next slide. So the next slide is pretty much the groupings of the problem space. And what you have here is a top level of problems, which is fear of missing out. I want a better viewing experience. I want to watch where I want to, and I can't find something to watch. OK, any questions right now? Because this is very deep in the example. Um, so what I just did is I've minimized the number of cards I need to start with them. Um, it's much easier just to stick with more of the fundamental issues. Like, do you have more of an, you ask the customer, do you have more time spent while you're commuting? Do you watch Netflix more than commuting? Or 
do you have much more frustration if you can't find things to watch? And it's a, it's a much higher level question than these problems that you have here, and much more so than, say, solutions. OK, here is something tricky. So I want to say that these groupings is an art. It's not a science. It's subjective. Um, it can be grouped in different ways. Let's say, for example, I want to know what my friends are watching. It goes under the fear of missing out. But it could also go under this category. I can't find something to watch, so I want to know what my friends are watching. Um, it could also go in there. So where do you put it? And the thing is, you, you need to ask this question to the customer. Um, do you want to know what your friends are watching because you can't find something to watch, or do you actually have a fear? And I've separated these two out because this is more of a frustration, and this is more of a fear. So you have to find out where does this go based on that feeling or based on this big bucket? Now, that was pretty deep. Any questions? Yeah, I'll ask. Um, at which point do you trust what the user's saying? Because there's a bit of balance there between the yep. on the top level and you're kind of, okay, you dig deeper. But it, it sounds like you're actually trusting to group it into. Yes. So, one, you could try, you could say, here, could you group this for me? Or two, you group it yourself after you interview five people, for example. Uh, they might come up with something simpler, and then you get a better idea. Um, again, this is an art, yeah. right? What you want to try to find out, what is the core problem in their life when it comes to live streaming? So. So you regroup them, you group them again, and then maybe you could redistribute them and say, could you regroup it in a different way? And then you figure out, it just builds a conversation. That's the whole point of this tool. Um, so you're not all over the place. You don't have disparity between the two solutions. It's much easier to compare at this level. Can you review them one at a time, or you put them in a focus group? Uh, have experience with one. Because as far as in focus groups, they tend to influence each other. Yes, 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 yes. And that's the same reason why I prefer one-on-one -on -one conversations. I usually have one dev and myself. The dev is, is basically being a very expensive note taker. But at the same time, he is learning. The ex he could see the frustrations or the, prep, the props that they're giving to the devs. Like, oh, wow, this is such a great feature. And the devs are happy about it. And then they could also see their frustrations. And that's when there's like, oh, James. And then they could provide a tech solution somewhere in the back that they figured out. Um, there's usefulness in having devs, as well as um, having UX there. But don't put three people in a room. Two is probably two is the top. Um, and then have one person speak and the other to take notes. Um, focus groups, yes, they talk over each other. One doesn't even talk at all. And they might copy each other's ideas. Um, yeah, that's why I prefer one at a time. So when I was working at Mendeley, actually a company upstairs, they have a community group where they get students coming in once a week. So they, their main customers is students. Um, they come in once a week and we get five, five students per day sometimes um, to, to do user testing. That was pretty much the heaven of user testing, constantly just testing everything every time I push something out. OK, let's move on. All right. So OK, back to this. So the point is, I zoomed this out so that we want to prioritize based on this top level first. All right. And what you want to avoid is this situation. When you're trying to do everything at the same time, everyone has limited resources. You don't have all your resources to deliver all these experiments or all these solutions at the same time. Just stick with one one opportunity, but don't end up like this, where you just have literally one opportunity and you can't do anything else. This is like a sign of desperation, really. Um, when this, this happens usually when a hippo, someone who's up there and who's telling you just, to, just, to, just deliver this opportunity, and then that's it. Um, the point is you need to actually compare and contrast, though that's actually a bad example, but have have these available for you to compare and contrast so you know what's better, which has a better impact. Don't just say, this works or it doesn't work, but have something to compare it to. That's my point. That's it. <laughs>